grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit that we may not only hear your word and take it to heart, but put it to work in our lives. Help us to hear that you do indeed value each and every one of us. And as you have valued us, you have also given us things and call upon us to use them. Use them for your glory and for your purpose, for the good of others, and out of love toward others, but especially out of love toward you. In your name, amen. So, I want you to think about the question I started with, what gives you value, what gives you worth? Now, either you're feeling pretty miserable about yourself this morning, or you're not sure where I'm going with this. Uh, I'm hoping it's the latter of the two. I I want you to think about what we witnessed already this morning. What we witnessed already this morning was Baptism. baptism. Not just one, but two. And as we witnessed the baptism... I want you to think about how did they get here? First and foremost, they got here because... Okay, this is simple biology. (laughs) I don't want you to go into the details of the conception. They were born, right? Okay, so I want you, if you would, Ben, bring up the Old Testament reading. Listen to what it says in verse... Uh, four and five. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So even before Marley and Wade were put together, God knew them. Knew them just like, oh, I know that's going to happen. Or knew them, knew them. Knew them intimately. Knew them personality. Knew them as valued creations. Right? So first thing for each and every one of us, what gives us value? God, because he he made us. He created us. He created each and every one of us uniquely, each and every one of us as his special creature. There is no two that are exactly like, including identical twins. Even identical twins have slight variances. I had a a set of twins that were cousins of mine. They were um, probably about 10 years older than me. And... um, I was pretty much the only one in the family outside of their parents that could tell them apart. And uh, for whatever reason, all, all the friends in the other family couldn't tell them apart, but all I had to do was look at their face and I knew instantly the difference between them. And you know, they went, uh, went to a, a gathering, a family type thing, and um, they made them switch jackets thinking that I knew the jacket that each one was wearing. They said, no, that's Chris and that's Cor. I know who they are. And, and I want you to, to think about that's how God knows us even better. He knows what's inside because he created it. He knows what our strengths are. He knows what our weaknesses are. He knows exactly everything we are and will be because that's what he created. But is that all there is to our value and worth? Something else happened. Listen again. Before I formed you in the womb, I 
knew you, and before you were born, I... Two things had to happen for that second one to be true. One of those things is wealthily spoken of or seen in our sanctuary. Let me go over it with you. Cross, 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 cross. Oh, and by the way, cross. What had to happen? Jesus died for us. He redeemed us. He made us his own. He gave up his own life that our lives would be spared, our lives would be saved. So not only did he create us, but he also redeemed us. And not only did he create us and redeem us, then he chose us as his own as we witnessed with Marley and Wade this morning. The waters of baptism claim us as God's own, bring us into his family, and we are cherished children of God through the waters of our baptism. Consecrated. Consecrated meaning set apart or selected by God to belong to him. Selected by God to be his very own. On Wednesday night as I was preparing for service and um, people were milling in and I gave my first question, I had one person sitting in the pew saying, I don't have any value or worth. And I want you to hear this because that's exactly what Satan wants you to think. Satan wants you to think that you are worthless. Satan wants you to think that you have no value to anyone. Satan wants you to think that you are absolutely worthless and therefore it's pointless for you to be around. What does Satan use in your life for those around you, for those who might torment you, to make you feel that way? Think about people who are critical. Think about the world who wants you to think that if you're not a certain race, if you're not a certain gender, if you're not a certain kind of person, then you're invaluable, or then you're worthless. Ben, could you put up that first picture? Who is the most valuable person on that screen? Now, flip that opposite, Ron. They all are. They all are, right? They all are because what? Happened to every one of them. God made them and Jesus died for them. That makes all of them valuable. Absolutely every one. No matter what age, no matter what race, no matter what creed, no matter what, each and every one of them is valuable to God because God created them and redeemed them, each and every one. Can we say that about the next one? Ben, who's the most valuable person on the screen? All of them, irregardless of age. Whether it's the baby, whether it's the mom, I'm assuming that's mom, or whether that's grandma. Each and every one of them are valuable. I want to kind of chat about the screen just for a minute. In Japan, they do something to take care of their elderly. And this is a show or a picture of that. Can you imagine that parents bringing little children into nursing homes, into places uh, like assisted living places, what it does for the morale of the residents? What do you think it does? Yeah, it, it lifts their morale. And, and you think that's the only effect. 
Because if their morale is lifted, what do you suppose happens along with that? Their health improves. This is why, you know, during COVID, when there was a lockout, nobody could get into the nursing homes. How many people absolutely suffered because they couldn't have that human contact? And especially to see the little children. That tells us that life at every age matters. And our interaction with each one of us matters. And that's why God gave us each other, so that each and every one of us would feel that love of God as we commune, or so to speak, with each other. Peter puts it this way in the book of Acts, if you would, Ben. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears Him and does what is right is acceptable to him. See, that's God showing his value, his love. But that's the perfect love of God. As Jeff read our scripture readings today, how many of you really loved hearing our epistle reading? Raise your hand. 1 Corinthians 13, right? What love was Paul describing? God's love. See, God's love is the perfect love. God's love is all the things that Jeff read. God's love is that. What's the problem with that? The problem is we have that expectation that everybody's love has to be that way. But what's the problem with us? We're sinners. And because we're sinners, do we ever get love right perfectly? No, we don't. We hurt one another. Intentionally sometimes, unintentionally at other times, no matter what the case is, we do hurt one another. But that's why Jesus came to redeem. That's why Jesus came to reiterate that perfect love of God, not only through his sacrifice, but by calling us to be his own. But as he did that, as he did that very thing for us, it means not only do we have value, but we also have meaning. We have purpose. Because God doesn't create without it. God creates each and every one of us with meaning and purpose. And if we have meaning and purpose in our lives, that means there is something for us to do. A task. A role to play. Okay, I'm going to show you another picture. Can anyone tell me what this is? <laughs> how, are, how is this hammer and a baby similar? And no, you cannot use a baby to put a nail in. What? They make noise? They make noise? <laughs> eh, maybe. Each of them had to be created. Okay? God gave life to Marley, to Wade, to Sarah, to Asher, to every baby I can see nearby. God gave and created that life. Somewhere, someplace, that head of that hammer was forged, created. Somewhere, someplace, the handle of that hammer was carved. Somewhere, someplace, the two were joined together to make that hammer. Does this hammer have a purpose? Yes. It's not to drive in screws. Because if you try to use it that way, it probably won't work. It is to either put things together or take them apart. Either way, that's its purpose. But what is its mission? 
Because each and every one of us also has a mission. And where did God put you? And what situations are you in? Among what people do you interact? And there's the mission that God gave us. Go and make disciples right where you're at. Go and serve right where you're at. Go and love right where you're at. You are valuable to God. You have worth because of God. And you have mission and a purpose and meaning in your life because of God. Because God shows you to be His own. Now sometimes that's intimidating. When we look at what God was saying to Jeremiah, if you would... Ben, go to the Old Testament reading again, and I want you to hear those words a little bit further in, like verse 8. Read it with me. Do not be afraid of them. How many of you are intimidated to share your faith because you're afraid of the reaction you'll get? Raise your hand. Phew. How many are intimidated to share your faith, period? Raise your hand. Not as many as I thought. But what happens? I want you to think about how many times we'll choose to do something for ourselves, choose to take our time and spend it on ourselves, rather than spending it helping someone else rather than taking care of someone else, rather than loving someone else. And you're going to find it's more often than not we're going to choose ourselves than someone else. Our mission doesn't mean we ignore ourselves. Our mission means that we can't ever be afraid to the reaction that we're going to get. And I guarantee that we're going to get reactions. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You know, we're living in a time where the reaction to the truth, the reaction to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the reaction to the the holy Christian faith is going to be a very negative reaction. So what do we do? Verse 8. Do not be afraid of them. Don't ever be intimidated by knowing Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And don't ever be intimidated in sharing your faith. God gave you meaning. God gave you value. And God gave you a mission. Because he loves you. Because he chose you as his own. See that value. See that meaning. And carry out that mission. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all.